Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you leading edge astrology conversations through a journey of soul growth patterns connecting astrology's energetic cycles. Get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. Hello, this is Sue Rose Minahan, host and founder of Talk Cosmos, where we have insightful conversations awaken consciousness for soul growth. And today is the 13th of I was going to say a Venus, but it's of Leo. It Venus is in Leo, and it is a Venus star point. We'll bring attention to that. It's really a significant heartbeat of our consciousness, and it's a retrograde. It's a whole ball of energy that is refocusing us within with our heart. And I will notice, too, that because I am in Hawaii, this is where I live, but I live on the big island which is right next door to Maui. And my heart goes out to all of Maui. It's so significant of, uh, as we know, it's how can you say too much? It's so soon. But I will say that Hawaii has its natal Saturn, Saturn at zero degrees Capricorn. It is a comeback kid. It'll be interesting to see as a heartbeat also of the world that everybody loves so much, bringing back one's precious, loving memories or hopes for memories, you know, everything combined, how it plans to regroup. I know that both locals and tourists are high on their mind. So it's a new time for everybody. Thank you for joining we have quite a panel here. It's always about the new moon, meaning we get a new start, a real new start deep down in our hearts. So let's just get started with archetypal symbols. Thank you. Synthesizing the current archetypal new moon energies through weaving symbol systems, such as Sabian symbols, numerology, Mayan novel energy days, or even tarot, Connecting to the astrological data and concepts for planets and cosmos, this is your Archetypal Symbols panel. I'm Sue Rose Minahan, founder of Talk Cosmos since 2018, collaborating weekly with guests where insightful conversations awaken consciousness for soul growth. I'm an eclectic modern evolutionary astrologer and consultant, a workshop facilitator and conference speaker a Dwarf Planet University graduate, a certified color energy life coach. I'm the Washington State Astrological Association lecture moderator, a member of Kepler Astrologer Toastmaster Club. I hold an AA degree, Associate of Fine Arts Music degree, and Certificate of Fine Arts in Jazz. I'm a writer, artist, musician, an ardent ethologist, a student of esoteric philosophies and life. I'm Elizabeth Liz Machette, a professional astrologer, intuitive, numerologist, and tarot reader. I'm a certified sacred healing counselor, providing nurturing in-depth consultations for individuals and couples. I'm an author, blogger, speaker, and international Reiki master and teacher. I create safe space in which to explore the deeper patterns of your life to clarify your current circumstances and help you find your best path forward. And I'm Justin Crockett-Elsey, an archetypal astrologer, teacher, and author. I combine both Western ancient astrology and modern psychological astrology with Eastern Vedic astrology. And I specialize in predictive, electional, and karmic astrology for individuals and couples. I'm a certified aromatherapist and essential oil specialist and an herbalist and I offer remedial modalities of plants for psychological life issues to empower clients with compassionate healing. I also do in-depth astrological research into arcane astrological concepts, focusing on the mystical, occult side of astrology. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift, and that's why it's called the present. 
Yes, it is. And I needed to remember that the name of this Leo new moon at 20 degrees is creative combustion. It's really a force, isn't it? Yeah. Well, hi, both of you, Liz and Justin. It's a real treat. It's good to be back. And we meet again. it's August 13th because yes. you said it was Leo 13th. <laughs> so... Oh, well, you know, that's interesting because, yes, it's so easy to do that. It just, it, 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 where is the beginning and the end sometimes? But it is true. Venus has many uh, uh, archetypes. Yes. Thank you. Right. That's so, great to be here. <laughs> yes. L Elizabeth, Liz's website is A Light Path and Justin's is his name. He is in working very soon this coming month to really get it up to date. So have patience and email him. And there's all that information online too. And join us for all the updates. Here we are. This is, I added this slide. I thought we really need to focus a little bit just on that simple factor that the new moon offers this chance to get our desires and to manifest, you know, in the world. There's always a window. It doesn't have to be that exact day. It's on the 16th, early in the morning. It could be a few days afterwards it, to guide our understanding and that relationship because it's with ourself, isn't it, that we have anything externally replicated, how we understand it and feel about it. If you have something to say, let me know. Raise your hand or something, or I'll just move along because I know we have a lot of slides. Yes, Liz. I like what it says to intentionally shift our inner transformational process, replace our desires, manifest into the outer external world, and share. I, I, yeah, that's that really we share. nice. Mm. Oh, thank you. Well, we'll keep that. That's a keeper then. Oh, now why did I do that? Oh, yes, because we're adding a chart for the Venus star point. It's when the Sun and the Venus are exactly Kazemi. And this particular one, Adam Gainsbourg was on last week. Wonderful program. Brought right to my attention that Chiron there is trining it in fire, in Aries. It's a very healing time, meaning give compassion to ourself. We're going to get through whatever it is, what's coming back to us, our lost loves of interests and people. I mean, he didn't say all this, but I am saying it to, to, to lead on because we really want that what's current. It's squaring in that action with Uranus. Uranus in vibrational astrology is now time, right now. Well, and also the Venus star point when the sun and Venus come together, it's also similar to a new moon cycle because it's a new beginning for the next 584 days. So. Yeah, nine months. Very mm -hmm. good point. And the next one will be in Gemini next year. They all stay, for those people that are learning this Venus star point, it's a 100-year process. So we're going to keep having a Leo one, but it's going to change where it's on the five-pointed star between the five signs. And right now it's the head, meaning... That, that's a distinction. So we'll go on. Any other thoughts or shall we go on? No. Okay. Well, thank you for reminding us because it is today, folks. This is happening. You can put it in your charts. It's 20 degrees. It's a fixed sign. It's Leo. What is Leo? Fire, spark of life, instinctive, spirit. It's also heart-centered. Time to... Focus on those passions. It's creative, playful, children, the legacy. Yes, joy. I, I agree with all that. That's good. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Ah, joy. Tremendous. It, that's something we need as later in life to always remember. This is our given right to have joy. And it could be just in that moment. <clears throat> anyway, because we can't control it everything in the world but we can have that moment where we smell the flowers yes <laughs> i see justin smiling 
So we are going to start off with the lunar mansions, the nest chakras, because there's Eastern and Western astrology. Nest chakras are small constellations of stars and known as the lunar mansions. And Justin, you're our lead here. Yeah, no problem. So yes, as you, as you explained that the constel the lunar mansions are the constellations behind the constellations, the fixed stars. Mm -hmm. And so within and are also recognized within Western astrology as well. There there's a quite a bit of a volume of work on the lunar mansions in Western astrology. But this particular one for this new moon is in a uh, nashakra called Alesha or Ashlesha however you want it. It's a couple of spellings in Sanskrit. And it's related to the snake, the coiled snake. And so, um, and it's in the fourth pada because every nashatra is broken up into four sections. And this particular one ends up in the fourth pada. And so the ruling planet for this nashatra, this, this constellation is Mercury. So it highlights Mercury in the chart, which we'll take a look at. Well, what's interesting is that when a person has moon and Ashlesha uh, nashatra, they tend to be very focused. Um, and so it sort of has this mission, very driven. And if we want to think about a snake, you know, snakes kind of go through the grass and they've got a mission. They know where they're going. Nothing stops them. And in some, um, some Vedic astrologers will say in personalities, this is people who use people, but it's just that they understand, okay, I need this person to accomplish this mission. I need this person to accomplish this mission. So it's very driven. And so, um, in this, and in this particular pada, it's most less likely to use people and, and and just move on it's more and more about um an emotional depth to that relationship with a mission and a focus so all of these key words actually it's going to kind of shock you when we get into the the saving symbols for the new moon today we're going to see these same concepts of focus and a mission and emotional uh emotional uh attachment to that so well that's a I like this idea. And it is with that pot of 26 degrees, 40 minutes to 30 degrees of cancer and yeah. the clinging star and the star of embrace. So I suppose that's, it's, it's powerful. Thank you. It is, is, thank you. The numerology adding two and three is five. And I noticed too, that Taurus is 14, so we could add that to five. Change, that's the bottom line. Liz, you wanna bring up some? Oh yeah, the number ideas. five is it, like the number for change, change, change. And um, Mercury's also associated with that. So we have a theme going here of Mercury so far. Um, it's intelligent and it's like short trips. So there might be a lot of um, be prepared for a lot of little short trips or unexpected trips because there's always, you know, movement with that and be adaptable and it's very social. So go ahead, Justin. Yes. No, you know, I was going to just kind of step back here for a second for the people listening and to think, okay, how do everything we're saying to them, how can they use this in the real world, right? Apply this to where, so if everything we're saying here for folks that they can think about where this new moon is in their chart, and maybe if it's in a house, they're starting something new there, or as Liz said, there's travel, there's this creative combustion. So People who are listening to this show would want to think about, okay, how do I, how does this apply to me? Would we where this new moon is showing up in their charts and that these type of themes are showing up for them or could show up them in how in that area of their their chart? Well, there, life today encompasses an extreme measure of transition. It's as though it hasn't stopped in some ways since 2020 we're collectively transmuting new and old and it's always a process life is a process as einstein says change is the only thing it's you know evolving it's meaning that in this number when i 
checked a little reference about it. It's not just that it uh, can change, but it loves change. <laughs> it's like, please, let's change. Let's just do this. Be curious. Adapt. It's adventurous. And I was rather surprised by that kind intensity of it, meaning that it that is how we would encounter new situations or new experiences, isn't it? So it's really a gift, although it can be hard. Right now, Leo is a fixed sign, so it's not always so eager to go on somebody else's terms of change, but it's something to remember. I appreciate bringing it back home to the individual, to all of us. It's in my well, 11th you know, house. We don't have to change today, but we can start picking <laughs> steps to change in the future because it's like planting the seed. We don't till the soil and throw the seed in and tomorrow it's a grown plant giving us fruit or vegetables. So there's always a <laughs> <Excellent>. process involved. <laughs> this is a picture of Apollo. I'm not sure who painted it. It's a wonderful one. I have a Canva and it was on my, my account, but Archetypal symbols, we're weaving the astrology with a, a variety of metaphysical systems. And for that purpose, to bring the new moon seed story consciousness, because there's always a gift. And as Justin indicated, it's in your house, but that is the process that we're continuing with. And with that in mind, we bring in the Arcana Tarot cards. Liz? Yeah, the major Arcana of the Tarot. And the Strength card is associated with Leo. And um, the sign Leo rules the sun. So we also added the sun card this, this month. So the Strength card is about action and energy and bravery, determination and a successful outcome. Go ahead, Justin, you can finish up. Oh, no, I, I was going to say, um, yeah, no, I can't add really anything to that. That's that's yeah. uh, spot on. Yeah, definitely. So the sun, once again, abundance. Think of the sun out there generating its hydrogen to the entire solar system, keeping everything in orbit, very much like Leo. It can delegate roles. It's abundance. There's joy. Remembering that word, a harmony of success, optimism, in its best feature and it's very necessary we need the sun we enjoy our night but we need the sun we need that ratio of 24 hours as we spin so sabian symbols was created by the psychic a clairvoyant elsie wheeler in 1925 with the astrologer mark edmund jones each symbol is an image and it represents a spiritual essence of every individual astrological degree 360 degrees within the zodiac and in our system which is common we use three for each the past degree the previous the present the current and the future and we will operate first looking at the ascendant then the mid heaven and then the new moon I think this is more of a traditional approach, looking at astrology. I was thinking about it because as an evolutionary astrologer, which I am, I would first look at the nodes and Pluto. But the fact is there's many systems and this is an excellent way because what is the ascendant? It's how we operate through life. And what is the midheaven? But how we operate through the interest that we're most dear are wanting to exude in the social realms and the new moon hey that's when the the will of our being and the emotional story of our existence with memories ties together any comments <laughs> no i was just going to add you know that ascendant you know most astrologers especially when teaching your students will start with the ascendant because that's the point of birth of, oh. of 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 the of the soul into the physical world as the ascendant and it shows really how a person moves forward and their mask into the world so i i, I love how you laid this out uh, thanks uh, good and the steering i know Demetri george always says it's and it's not she it's way back in hellenistic and ancient but it's the steering you steer life right right 
<laughs> or your boat. <laughs> yeah, or your boat. Yes, a, a boat smaller than a ship. <sighs> Here we are. 13 degrees. Leo is the ascendant right on my Pluto, near my Pluto. And it happens to be for Eastern time at 538 in the morning at 23 degrees. And anyway, but that is 13 degrees. That's right. Go ahead, Liz, or something. Did we have any comment? And you'll notice that Venus is right next door. It's moving. It's retrograding away because that's it. So it's moving from 20 degrees to 18 degrees, but it's significant. Yes, uh, it's separating from the sun and the moon. Oh, great. great. Look at what I did. I changed everything around. Well, I was having a merry old time doing these slides. And so we'll just stick with the basis. Leo, 12 degrees, an evening party of adults on a lawn illuminated by fancy lanterns. Ah, look at that. We're now back to business. <laughs> it, so it's a group in fashionable surroundings escaping from work. And this is a stage of sophistication. This is where we're coming from, which is involved in externals. It's superficial. It's not the deep part of ourself. So where's the 13 degrees, Liz? Okay, an old sea captain rocking himself on the porch of his cottage. The quieted mind's re recollection of crisis and joys long past. And the key word is quiet recollection. Yeah, this is a mental development I was noticing because there's always more to read. And I'm so glad you sent that. Liz sends me these and I put them in, which I'm very grateful for. Well, in this time, four of them wanted to jump out each time. So we, a few of them, we have four Sabian symbols. So but go ahead. Well, I don't, I can't manage to get to the next page. I don't know. Ah, there, there we is. are. You do. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> Leo 14 is a human soul seeking opportunities for outward manifestation. Keynote is the yearning for self-actualization, which we're all on this planet to do. And uh, what we're talking about here is letting the soul speak out, letting the soul manifest. It's Isn't that excellent? It's the word let is emphasized. So let it be. Just stop all the chatter that goes, eh, not enough, can't do this, blah, blah, blah. No, just forward motion. Love it. Well, Leo 15 is a pageant. And Liz, you added this extra one. So we're headed off into a new description. It's spectacular floats down a street with cheering people. So it's a sensational release of energies, dramatizing, dramatizing rather, an unconscious aspiration of our primitive and instinctive nature. Oh, okay. Thank you. We have our helm at the wheel here, Nathan, and he's going to help us navigate these charts for those that are looking at it. So anyway, it's a demonstration. Any comments on that or shall we, with this ascendant? Yeah. I have a comment. It's the first three degrees that are on there to me is talking about, you know, relaxing, quieting the mind, you know, that kind of review which we have Venus retrograde and Mercury soon to be retrograde. So that kind of, we're in that window, so to speak, of doing that kind of work. And then and then after we follow through with that process, then we can go out and step back in and start moving along. Is that, well, it isn't, no, go ahead. No, and I'm just going to say, uh, if I could add on to that. And this is really, if you really look at this, this is the, the, uh, part in the process we all go through when something ends we evaluate we reassess or we look back you know recollection we um i can't think of the word i had just a second ago but it's um just an, it, looking back and reevaluating before we step into something new so this is very much indicative of the uh, of a new moon end of a end of a cycle beginning of a cycle here and of the Venus star point that is still evident starting today. And I will divulge, this is my Pluto in the 11th house. And so as I was looking at this, I thought, oh, 
really focus on this, Sue, there are advantages. It's not necessarily an easy process. Nothing is in transformation, but we're grateful to continue on. Yeah. I would ahead. say one other thing, since since Liz was intuitive, uh, intuitively led to put in this 15, I think this is important because it's, it's talking about how we are moving into the new cycle and we're releasing those new energies that when we were talking yes. about combustion and this one's demonstration and floats and a sensational oh, release of energies, dramatizing. Yes. You yes. know, so this, I, I thank you, Liz, for putting that in there. <laughs> this is good teamwork because bringing up just the title, Creative Combustion, that it ties things together. Now, let's see. Oh, I guess we're ready for a break. But you know what? Let's just notice that the Sabian symbols for the midheaven is going to be three, four, five, six. And unfortunately, I have Leo. It's going to be in Taurus. It's not. It's another fixed sign. So it's going to be early with that. And we will come back. So we'll have these slides fixed. Everything will be great. And on to manifestation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. While we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We are currently in the Yang period of Leo, ruled by the solar sun. Having departed from a cycle based on the internal process of emotional attachments requiring security and safety, the energy of Leo externally manifests our legacy through children and artistic creations. As a fixed Yang fire sign that desires to ignite actualization, Leo the Lion takes the risk to generously exhibit love and welcome all to share their stage with joyous pleasure for living life. This is Martha Norwalk. Every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to Dr. Nels Rasmussen at HealingMinistryForAnimals.com, we cover the world of animals. This week, August 20th, it's Behavior Training and Healing Sunday with me, and talk with your animals or human loved ones on this side or the other, feng shui and personal awareness coaching with Natasha Venter. Hope you can join us and plan to call in with your questions for either one of us or for a personal reading with Natasha. Martha Norwalk's Animal World, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, right here on Alternative Talk, a.m. 1150. Talk Cosmos brings you leading-edge astrological conversations with hour-long programs each week on KKNW. The show goes live every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on Facebook and YouTube, along with daily chats throughout the week on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel. While you're there, make sure you click like and subscribe buttons so you can get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or, if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. So, grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha and enjoy the show. Make us part of your daily routine. Alternative Talk, 1150. We're back. Okay. And I realize we have a whole list of goodies to bring up. So maybe we'll kind of shift through some of these Sabians to get to some more astrology and we can keep tying it together if that all makes sense here. So once we get the slides up and yeah, thank you so much. So midheaven, Taurus, not Leo, three degrees, natural, it's it's early Taurus, manifest natural steps lead to a lawn of covert influence. So it's this gradual expansion of an individual consciousness after fundicating, which is an old term for fertilizing or fruitful experience. And so it's a natural fulfillment. Liz? The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Riches that come from linking the celestial and the earthly nature. Communion. Oh, and the next page. And then Taurus uh, uh, five degrees is a widow at an open grave. And the keynote here is the impermanence of all material and social bonds and discarding the past. 
Go ahead. You want to do six? Yeah, Cancel. I'll do six. Okay. Yeah, so Taurus, uh, six degrees is the uh, bridge across a deep gorge, over across a deep gorge. And the keynote is the conquest of separateness through group cooperation and the capacity to conquer obstacles to achieve evolutionary continuity. This seems so powerful. I have to admit that listening to the TV last night with Maui and they had a a, a city council with all the uh, news people around the world wanting to present the accurate information, which is so extraordinary. I don't know if other towns do that or states. And one thing that came again and again was to give time and aloha and love. And I realized that this respect, this I'm with group cooperation, asking for the group to cooperate through this mutual respect. I felt what a beacon for the rest of the world because people have been pouring. Well, not I don't know if they're pouring, but they're donating, contributing funds from around the world because again, Hawaii holds many memories for many people. You know, it is a unique spot, right? Smack dab in the middle of the ocean. Although there's other wonderful places, there's Tahiti, I imagine, or Bali, I haven't been there. But the point is that discarding the past to open up for the future, to conquer obstacles is teamwork, group cooperation. And that requires this Venus in Leo aspect that is asking us to do all of this, isn't it? And it fits with the title, the creative combustion you know release and then the creative ideas and then cre and then it's creating and moving forward the conquest yeah. yeah here we have the sabian symbols these mystical energies for the sun and moon again it will be at six on the 16th everywhere except in hawaii which is right at 11 38 p.m on the 15th but other than that it'll be on the 16th and for the united states it's in the very first house leo because it's leo rising and the leo pr prior where we're move, having moved from is a carrier pigeon fulfilling its mission its spirituality in terms of training for service to mankind to be a world server Liz? Leo 23 in a circus, the bareback rider displays her dangerous skills, the audacity and persuade, perseverance required to control and play with the powerful energies of the vital realm in human existence, virtuosity. And then next. And then Leo 24, oops, Leo 24 is totally concentrated upon inner spiritual attainment a man is sitting in a state of complete neglect of bodily appearance and cleanliness. You can think of a yogi here. Keynote, an interior focalization of energy and consciousness at, at the expense of all forms of outward activity and care. So the key word here is total concentration, a certain kind of technique or at least an adequate means to reach an envisioned goal. How am I trying to say this quickly <laughs> and go to the it. point? Yeah, I okay. We'll just go to that last point. We have a pre-chat to share with our audience, and Justin, I remember you bringing up very clearly this idea of the focus of concentration and through the concentrated effort, and to be a world server. And when I look at these, you know, Sabian symbols it does remind me of because the importance of this i must say that in my quick mind which i am a gemini although i do go deep i can be on the surface and think oh leo it's this and this and this but a fire is intense it really gets down and cleans things out to get that concentrated energy maybe that's part of it go ahead What's your thoughts? Go ahead, Liz. It reminds me of um, getting out of your head, you know, so through meditation or yoga or even a walk 
in the, in the woods, you know, it's like try to get out of being so mental and, you know, maybe go towards your heart. So go ahead. No, and I and I would say I come right back to the nishakras because that, that's what I was talking about earlier. Is that you know it's it's it has this emotional intensity towards accomplishing something. You know that coiled mm -hmm. snake. It it really wants to just go, and it's going to use all its resources. And you know I think this if people want to say well how does this apply to me I would say well this is a great time with this new moon to really. Uh, be concentrated on a project, on on um, on letting go of something from the past. You know, that's what I would say mm. that this applies to people's personal lives at this point. I'm having trouble moving these slides. Okay, there we go. For oh, the 23 degree Leo new moon this year will be just to quickly say in London at. 10 38 in the morning on the east coast at 5 38 a.m in the morning the pacific coast at 2 38 p uh, it should be a.m pardon me for that typo my goodness and but here in hawaii it'll be shifting over from early in the morning to uh 11 38 in the night there are highlights. It's still a locomotive shape, has a lead planet of Pluto, and choosing the caboose planet, the primary planet of the nine would be Mars. But just following that, we could say it's a, co a collection of energies, series, nurturing series with a south node of release, with Haumea of rebirth. And I wanted to bring that up because Pluto, we know, is transformation. But Hamea, the Hawaiian goddess, is which, which is all in Leo right now, is of rebirthing, very powerful. So Pluto, to remind people, is retrograde. It will next January go back to Aquarius on the 11th of January. But right now it's at 28 degrees and 32 minutes of Capricorn. So it is approaching the United States natal Capricorn. It won't quite touch Kazemi, but it's close. Meanwhile, Pluto is still operating to in an active square between the lunar nodes, which are new. They're new lunar nodes. They're areas of self, which is where we're headed to embody, and the south node of where do our relationships misguided us to answer too much to other people's needs. So it's complex. Mercury will a week later go retrograde. But we have these two interesting dynamic grand uh, aspects. That includes four planets with, no, three planets with an Earth trine and three in a cardinal grand cross. And we'll see those following. So let's begin with the grand trine. And I thank you, Liz gave me this information. I put it to slides. It is with power plants, or planets. <laughs> it would actually be Mars, Uranus, and Pluto. Mars at 28 degrees Capricorn. Mars, what am I? If, go ahead. Pluto is at 28 Capricorn. Mars at 22 Virgo. And Uranus at 23 Taurus. Yeah. So here Virgo. we have it. So it's a grand Earth trine. So to ground us in and... Uranus, Mars, and Pluto are, are interacting cooperatively at this point. So use that to your advantage. It will accelerate. And with, with Mars and Uranus, it's unpredictable and it's accelerating. It's and, very you true know, to be open. And if I can add something on to this, I think it's important to look at what planets are around those three triangulating planets. Uh, specifically Mercury is right there with Mars. Um, so, you know, and we've already talked about how Mercury has a little bit of a role on the stage with the other planets here. And so I think, you know, to me, um, 
you know, Mercury right there with Mars, it's evaluating and it's very mental the way it's thinking about its its effort and action. And as Liz, you've pointed out, these are three planets of change and action here. Um, and then, of course, you know, Jupiter is supporting Uranus up there in, in Taurus. And, and and Pluto's way out on the, the third uh, triangulation of this. So definitely a mental, I think a mental uh, uh, thing is going on here as well. Good point, because it brings to mind the, the focus that we want to, we want to change now. Mm-hmm. We're thinking about all the options because Uranus is now. Let's go to the next. We have a Cardinal Grand Cross This is with Pluto, the nodes, south and north, and Eris, which is the goddess of chaos and strife, you might say, but really about inclusion and exclusion. Notice that everything might be excluded. So, hey, we're bringing it into the scenario. You're not left out. And Juno, our alliances. And these are in the Pluto at 28 Capricorn, south node at 25 Libra, North Node at 25 Libra, Aries, and Eris at 26 Eris. At Aries. Aries. I'm sorry, it gets a little tongue twisty. So here it is. And I think we're going to go on to the next. This is a nice diagram that shows the square. Because interestingly, I'm noticing that Uranus and Pluto, I mean, so many of these planets are involved in a multiple of aspects, action for one and a flow for the other. They're all having a, it's somewhat like a. So it reinforces that the cha- we're being called to change, right. but it probably won't be as hard as we think it is because we have the trying to help, the grand trying to help facilitate that. It's like, the dread before, but then afterwards go, wow, what was I so worried about? That made, you know, this is really good. I'm glad this, this, I did this or this worked out. Yep. How hopeful. That's good optimism. Let's see, I can't get to the next slide. I'm having real trouble. Nathan or somebody. Okay, there we go. Uranus, change master, is conjunct, squared, and trine. It is, as you are noticing, Justin, the, the, the associated planets, you know, these energies are, are talking with each other. They're in close vicinity. And Uranus is right next to Jupiter in Taurus. And so it's with that action with Venus, which rules it. Venus rules Taurus. So that's a fascinating thing. It's like really wants to get to new values, a new way of of approaching what we love and what's meaningful. And, and also it's, it's being helpful. Like you're both saying, I think it's quite incredible because it's in that flow, that 60 degree flow with Mars, the action planet of evaluation in Virgo to repeat your own words. So we're, we're on task. Hmm? Go ahead. Anything? You can go to the next slide. Okay. Here we are. Yeah, then it shows what Sue was just talking about there. Yeah, it it truly does. It, it, it So this is in our first house, this sun and moon, looking at that energy, this, this loving energy. So it's really an energy that we're relating deeply, very personal. Yes? Yeah, and you know, if I can say something here about uh, Venus retrograding in Leo... And specifically, we see it in the nation's first house here. From somebody who has Venus and Leo and is going through a Venus retrograde, I I understand how this can play out. And I've seen it in a couple of clients' charts as well, is that, you know, this is this is sort of this archetype of questioning our um our self-expression our mask to the world i mean what are we supposed to be because you know leo's about self-expression self-authenticity one's really 
here's your mask. This is who you are, right? And and with uh, and of course, Liz and I had this great conversation about this earlier this week because I'm having a Venus retrograde. So it's you know it's I think be, being that it's in the nation's first house here, we see this happening. There's this chaos and this change about what are we supposed to be about? Where are we going? You know, how do we change? What is our footprint going forward do we pull back in do we pull do we push out it's it's evaluation of self of one's of self-expression you know that is explicitly perfect realizing here with all the energies and looking at our north node in aries right at the midheaven that's where we're working to to achieve and along with it, there was another whole thought I had. And the concepts with Jupiter of our belief systems, of how that works. Um, yeah, I personally am also experiencing this. The, the, the thoughts come in and go out too quickly. Liz, <laughs> you have something <laughs> to the rescue. <laughs> well, I just agree with you. And... Um, we're also in this Mercury retrograde shadow because Mercury doesn't station retrograde for another week. But, you know, it's like you, we're still feeling all this energy that's kind of rumbling around. And, you know, with Jupiter and Uranus conjunct in that 10th house, it's like um, it could be around some beliefs of what people have. And, you know, maybe we'll yeah. get some new information that will help everybody. Yep. You know, that's that good. Be really oh, beneficial. how did I get to the end? Oh, this is the last one. Okay, very good. We don't need to keep forwarding on. I think with that Mars and 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 Pluto and Uranus, I'm going like power, power. We won't get there, but we're here. We're here. It's very good. We can relax. Look at the other aspects. This does show that combination because, as you'd said about Mercury, so much mercurial. The Pada is ruled by the mercury we're headed towards this this retrograde time where we're always reassessing whether now it's our heart at that time it's going to be both our heart and our minds which is a good thing because it's nice to connect them right there and retrograde i want to remind myself and others you see two directions nor normally if the planet appear nor we we think it's appearing forward and we're looking forward and in the sky, but in the sky, when it starts circling in its path and appearing to go to the left backwards, that's our experience. But we in here on earth can look backwards and forwards. That's why all the relationship, which I think is such a elegant, actually, it's, you know, it's There's hindsight. Mm -hmm. And there's something else in this chart, which we haven't talked about, which it's one of the asteroids, which is kind of, again overlaying on this theme here is that juno is at zero degrees leo on this chart and so for people's you know juno was the wife of jupiter and it represents relationship or marriage in the chart or what we can be married to or what we're writing about relationship with or what we see in relationships and it's at zero degrees leo so again it's this relationship with our our self-expression our our that evaluation that venus is asking us to question and and juno is like yep you're supposed to pay attention to this i'm at zero degrees leo now you're supposed to think about that relationship with your um you know with your creativity and with your self-expression i think this chart shows that very clearly thank you for bringing Remind oh, yes, us. it's opposing Pluto. Yeah, of yes. course. So <laughs> it's, yeah, thank you, Liz. Or well, whoever pushed that yeah, and, well yeah. Liz brought up the highlight and included Juno because we do look at the asteroids. And actually, yeah. Juno, yes, she is an asteroid. I keep thinking of Ceres. Ceres is the dwarf, god, dwarf planet. And so, therefore, I used different charts here to show different aspects so what so if i may jump in here you know mm -hmm. if we think about the t-square with pluto uh squaring the nodes we're not going to be able to move forward with where we're wanting to go because the nodes is about 
looking at the past and going forward and wanting to try to accomplish something. We can't unless we pay attention to Juno, which is completing the square with Pluto, right? Mm -hmm. And I think so it's really about I think it's it's all about the Leo energy right now, what that represents for people. What are we aligned with? Where is our heart truly anchored that we can give love and remembrance to for how it served us, how it exhibited in our life and, and was a stepping stone to where we are, but let it to be. For instance, I have a violin and I pulled it out. The case was moldy and I was horrified. I live here where it's, I have a lot of open doors in the wet air. The violin itself was fine. So I played it 18 years since I've played it. Now I've played it for most of my life. So I was able to, I was so happy. My music books are all from jazz and standards and some old timey music and whatnot. And I've been reflecting for years about what kind of music would I play now? And I think that's very significant. It's not that I threw out music, but what kind of music am I attached to that is moving forward? So it's just one way to. Well, and that speaks, that's a great example for this square because you're renegotiating a relationship with your violin. I mean, it's like. Yes, yes. You know, do I want to keep exactly. it? Do I want to play the old music? Do I want to play the new music? And it's like, it's been a part of me before and it's like bringing it back in. Yeah. You know, it could have been, okay, I played it and you know what, I'm done. I mean, you could have went oh, that road I too and, and said, well, I'm going to find that. some school to donate it to perhaps oh, or whatever. Oh, please, you're hurting my heart. Oh, I could. No, but you, you reestablished a relationship with your violin. So well, yeah, well, instead of putting it in storage in the closet, it came out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. Yeah. Oh, here I will mention I had a, a talk with Opa. You can, if you're not a member, you can purchase it. It's about the upcoming Venus star point for in four years with the university, not the university. <laughs> United States is a university. Imagine that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But, and there's a playlist always. And this is, I'm showing the slides. So in case I want to get back, we have this covered. As it flipped there accidentally. And there's old ones, too, you can always find. And, of course, thank you for joining with us. And here we have both, all three of us. Let's chat a bit about all of this. Yes. Where is it in your charts or what's your thoughts? How can we? Well, this is a very, very powerful new moon. I mean, I believe they're all very powerful, but this one seems extremely powerful. So, you know, really think about, you know, either doing a vision board or writing down three desires and maybe you have 10 thoughts and maybe you just chunk it down to two or three that you can do soon and then leave the other ones kind of on the back burner that you could maybe do at some point in the future. But it's, it seems really exciting because it looks like there's some wonderful changes coming for all of us. And Leo, actually, when I remember yourself, who's very adept at giving these vision boards, which I've enjoyed many times. Leo is especially promising. It's creativity, creative combustion. Justin. Yeah, I, and I might say, if I could share Liz, that's both in yours and my third house. So, <laughs> and so there's a lot of, you know, I, I like the whole, you know, focus about Leo being about creativity and I appreciate you bringing a personal story Sue about your violin and music I just I recently just got it back into I love jazz and got back into classical music and I like Vivaldi I'm just like nuts for it I love classical so and I'm too. thinking I'm I I used to play piano and so I'm thinking about oh. going in and bringing that back in <laughs> talking about creativity you yes. know and um so I, I think that really for people listening to the show, that's really, if I had to pick one, if you asked us what's one key word, I think for this is creativity for this new moon, you know, start. And change. That, and change, exactly. Right. Allow yourself to play with it because play is, is an ex organic experience without necessarily an outcome. You might have a goal, but it can change as you go along it, along with it. That's improvisation. So it's, 
you know, whether one writes a big circle on a piece of paper with a word in the middle and then just stream off on the sides, kind of breaks through your conditioning. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And and don't worry about the how. It's just like <sighs> put what you want to do because you might think, oh, that's going to cost $300,000 and I don't have $300,000. But don't worry about the how because if it's meant to be, it all comes to be. And truly, you may not get, well, yes, thinking of $3,000. The fact is, is that however life is answering us is one step towards the next step. And part of that is to enjoy it, to have some joy with it, to be thankful. I know I'm always training, retraining myself consistently to get with the program and realize that life is a gift. It's now the mystery, right? Just like we begin with. <laughs> well, enjoy that piano. I have one I found at a little thrift store and it's just sitting here. That's the next step. Oh my goodness. I may never get back to talk Cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure Let's we'll see you here road. again. Yeah, we, could, we could all do the music. Even Nathan plays. Thank you for joining us on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests connect soul growth patterns with the energetic cycles of astrology. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific time to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.